welcome a larger audience to our game here in Columbus. Taking a couple of bounces on the punt to Chris Fields. He will pick it up and try to get to the outside, and he will run out of bounds for the Buckeyes at their own 39-yard line with 47 seconds on the clock. And Kenny Guyton at quarterback for Ohio State, replacing the injured Braxton Miller. They need the touchdown and the two-point conversion to tie it up. This was a game that went to overtime last year. And here is the injury to Braxton Miller. Ohio State football first and 10. The tackle by Josh Johnson. There was no flag on that play, by the way. He was helped off to the sideline and then put in the ambulance and taken to a nearby hospital. The extent of his injuries unknown. Guyton trying to engineer the clock. quickly to the line there goes to clock they will not spike it they'll run the play Guyton on the rollout to Evan Spencer Clark inside the 15 and out of bounds 28 seconds to go you gotta like what Kenny Guyton is doing here he goes downfield finally completes one downfield to a wide open wide receiver gets his offensive team up on the ball chooses not to spike the ball but let's run a play this is college the clock stops on the first down so you have time to call a play does a really good job and then gets an eight yard game where the receiver can get out of bounds and stop the clock Buckeyes no timeouts Guyton rolling to the left this time Guyton with Macy bearing down him, and Guyton will throw it away. Well, when we asked the coaches about Kenny Guyton yesterday, what they tell? He's a coach's kid. He knows the game. He's a smart guy, and he has the respect of all of his teammates who may have freaked out when you lose your starting quarterback, Braxton Miller, but they love the job that Kenny can do for them at quarterback. I think if this is last year, they're a lot more nervous than the Kenny Guyton that they have now. This guy, they love the way his approach to the game. They love his knowledge of the game, and they like the way he leads this team. He's on the leadership council because he's made such a turnaround to become that kind of player. Third down. They will run the ball up the middle to Carlos Hyde, trying to get the first down yardage. And now you may see the spike. And there it is to stop the clock. 15 seconds to go. So they had to run it to get the first down. They have to burn about four seconds after the spot of that ball before the spike. 15 seconds left. They can still get a first down without getting to the end zone, but there's only 15 seconds left. You wonder how many plays they can run from the 10-yard line and what they have in mind with this passing game, how many plays they have for this type of situation, this deep in the red zone, to get them to the end zone. Spencer at the two. And that play only took three seconds. And, and so that's a quick throw, a three-second play. It's third down, so they'll get at least two more plays here if they don't get a first down. No timeout, so they would have to go to the outside if they did not go to the end zone. Guyton looking for the corner. Defense number 28. Here we are turned in the end zone. Ball will be placed at the two yard line. Not a whole lot there, but it's a call that they made, Beth. And in this situation, defensively, you tell your defensive backs right now, tackle the wide receivers. Don't let them run routes because the clock will be running. From the two, first and goal, Guyton throwing for the end zone. 
And now they need the two-point conversion to tie the game. I believe Definitely this appears. play will be reviewed upstairs. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. They would need video evidence to prove that it was not a catch in order to turn this over. On the season, if this play does stand, the Buckeyes are two for two on their two-point conversions, but in both instances, they were at the hand of Braxton Miller, who is out of the game with an injury. In this situation, on the two-yard line with eight seconds left, if you're on defense, you teach your defensive backs to tackle the wideouts. Do not let them run a route, because you only lose one yard if they call a penalty, and then you eliminate a play. The play clock is running regardless. There's three seconds left, and then they only have one play to run in that situation. They allow these guys to get open. They allow them to run out of a bunch. And this appears to be a catch to me. This appears yeah, to be we, a, a touchdown. We haven't seen a replay that uh, gives us uh, indisputable evidence to the contrary of the call on the field, which is a touchdown. And you got to give Guyton credit. I mean, he didn't look great uh, the series before. Throws the interception, under throws a couple balls. And then when they need it, when there's less than a minute left with the game on the line down by eight, Kenny Guyton steps up, makes a number of throws. He goes seven plays for 61 yards and 44 seconds with their season on the line here. I mean, this is they're 7-0, and this is a team that's talking about going undefeated so that they can keep their names in the conversation because they're in the situation. They can't play in the postseason, but it keeps them in every conversation as long as they're undefeated. After review, play stands is called on the field. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Well, last year in West Lafayette, the Boilermakers blocked a PAT late in regulation to force overtime. They won it in OT. Now, a year later, the Buckeyes need a two-point conversion here to tie it up with three seconds to go in regulation. Guyton on the rollout. Looking back the other way, Guyton to the end zone. They got it. Jeff Hireman ties it up. I'm going to take my team, put them in the end zone, not once, but then score two to tie this game at the end. Can't say enough about his poise, can't say enough about his confidence, and the way he rebounded to go get that touchdown and the two-point conversion. The junior who did not walk away after the sophomore Braxton Miller won the starting job. And Guyton, who is amongst the most respected guys on this team, has had a few moments in the last few games. And now, the biggest of his Buckeye career. Has he done enough to get Ohio State into overtime? Purdue has returned to kickoff for a touchdown today. The squibber up the middle. Nakeem Hunt will not take it the distance this time as the clock expires. And for the second year in a row, the Buckeyes and Boilermakers will play an extra session. Get them within two. And then Guyton 
to his tight end, Jeff Hireman, sneaking out the back door. And we are even at 22 apiece and headed to OT in Columbus. Going to overtime here at Ohio Stadium. Ohio State trying to stay undefeated. The comeback in the final minute, engineered by Kenny Guyton. And the coin toss. You want to pick people, okay? Now, you can decide what end of the field you want to play on. Last year, we went to overtime in okay, this game. So Ohio State started out with a field goal. Purdue responded Purdue with Purdue wins the toss, and we'll play defense. With a Robert Marv touchdown run to win it. So the Boilermakers uh, get the toss. They will defend. You get a possession that will start at the 25-yard line. And if we are even headed to that third overtime, you've got to start going for two. The Purdue defense, terrific today. A couple of big plays for them on offense and on special teams. They forced four turnovers. Braxton Miller knocked out of the game at the end of the third quarter. And Kenny Guyton engineering the game-tying drive and the two-point conversion in the final minute of the fourth quarter to knot it at 22. And this Purdue defense up until that last drive had played mistake-free football. And then on the last drive, left a receiver open downfield for, for 30, 40-yard gain and then left the tight end wide open for a two-point conversion. Corey Brown was nicked up earlier in the game. We did not see much of him in that fourth quarter. And Kenny Guyton just hanging on, trying to dive back to the line of scrimmage. Second down, Robert Macy has had a good day defensively. He was there to bother Guyton. That's a nice job by Guyton catching the, the high snap and not letting that turn into a much worse play and keeping it at second and 10. Set for Guyton. Eyes downfield. Got stone down. First down inside the 10. Diving to the 7. The first catch of the day for Jake. And you can see Kenny Guyton getting more and more comfortable standing in the pocket. Great protection by his offensive line, keeping the pocket, and Guyton stands there, waits on Stoneburner, Stoneburner to break across the field and throws a strike. 17-yard pickup. Guyton now 6 for 12, 77 yards. On in relief. They give to Carlos Hyde. Gets the helmet down inside the 5 to the 3. Tackled by Taylor Richards. Second and goal. And again, nice blocking by that left side of the Ohio State offensive line. Norwell, Lindsley, Mayorg. I mean, that is good block, a nice hole for, for Carlos Hyde to go downfield and set up a second and goal from the three-yard line. 17 carries, 91 yards today for Carlos Hyde. He'll get it again. Trying to second effort again. No, check that. Guyton keeps it diving to the one. Good ball fake. Carlos Hyde diving in for the touchdown. Buckeyes take the lead in overtime. Second TD of the day for Carlos as he goes airborne. And again, that's that offensive line off to the left side. Let's Carlos Hyde get into the end zone. He ran right up the back of Corey Lindsley and in. Extra point is good. So Ohio State first up in overtime. And they hit for seven. And now it's Caleb Turbush's turn.
So Kenny Guyton guiding the Buckeyes late in regulation and now an OT after the injury at the end of the third quarter to Braxton Miller. On the tackle by Josh Johnson, there was not a flag on that play. Miller taken to the locker room and eventually into an ambulance to a local hospital. The extent of his injuries unknown. Purdue needs seven to force a second OT. Turbush with the fake going upfield. Incomplete. Intended for Gabe Holmes, and it was a good stick by C.J. Barnett late in the play. And this is the ball that needs to come out a little earlier. The receiver is wide open out in the flat. Turbush has got to get this ball out, and it's a nice hit by C.J. Barnett to make sure that the receiver cannot bring this ball in. Well, it looks like Holmes had a good shot at that, but Barnett able to jar it loose. Second down, Boilermakers. Turbush incomplete. Over the head of McCarthy. Third down. Ohio State brings the blitz right up the gut. Unblocked man makes Turbush get the ball out before he wants to. He takes the big hit, throws the high ball, incomplete, setting up a third and ten. So try another receiver screen to Gabe Holmes. He gets to the 20. It will be fourth down. They need the 15 for a first down. Injured player for Ohio State is Jonathan Hankins. Second time he's been down today. Hankins in on this tackle, and it's really good hustle. I mean, for your defensive tackle uh, to rush the quarterback and then still have the ability to get out wide and make a tackle is, is really nice play and really nice hustle by Hankins. Purdue had the interception with 2.40 to go. In that fourth quarter, they had the ball and an eight-point lead. There was a third down play around midfield, Joey, where they ran it right up the middle, a very conservative play. They had to punt the ball away. That gave the Buckeyes an opportunity to come back late. That's the injury to Braxton Miller. That was at the end of the third quarter. Kenny Guyton with the touchdown drive in the final minute. Got the two-point conversion, and now an OT. They give there to hide for the score. Will it be enough for the Buckeyes? Purdue, five yards away from extending it a little more. Timeout. Joey, do they go back to the bubble screen that's uh, worked so well for them in the second half? I just think that's a tough call because it's throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage, and then you've got to gain those extra five yards. Um, if it's me, I go downfield, and they, they haven't done that well today. Um, and I think it's it's game planning a little bit. They've thrown the bubble screen. Uh, they've thrown the ball out to the flat. Uh, in this in this case, in this situation, on fourth and five with the game on the line, I think I'm going to try to throw the ball beyond the first down marker and see if I can complete one instead of depending on my guy to make a catch and run for the first down. We have not seen much of O.J. Ross. Let's see if they would look to Antavian Edison. A couple of catches today. He's been rather quiet. He is. A catch now in 28 straight games. He's number 13 there with the long hair.
And this is where your crowd, your 12th man, should come into play. It should be so loud that Turbush can't get his cadence, can't get his guys to hear the cadence in this situation. Fourth and five. Turbush stepping up on the run, launching it for the end zone. Incomplete. And the Ohio State Buckeyes win it in overtime. Another touchdown drive in OT. And on fourth down, the Buckeye defense holds. In this situation, Turbush has got to keep this ball in bounds and at least allow his receiver to have a chance to make a play on the ball. Intended for Crosby Wright, Christian Bryant with the coverage. Let's go down on the field now with Lewis Johnson. All right, thanks very much. Coach, what do you make of the way this team got into overtime and they pulled out the victory here? I think if you look up resiliency, and uh, I mean, we had some tough injuries to a couple of our leaders, and that's a resilient win against a good team. What about Kenny Guyton, the way he did get it to overtime, and then the way he rocked the stadium to bring it back for the win? The old right-hander made some plays for us, but he prepares. You know, he prepares the right way. In a situation like this, you're 7-0, and everything's on the line. What did you learn about your team in a moment like this? Well, I learned I learned about four weeks ago. They got real serious about their jobs. We're, we're not a great team, but we're getting better and better and better. And at the end of the day, we just got to find a way to win a game. And finally, most importantly, any update on Braxton Miller? No, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm anxious to find out as well. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Beth? Thank you, Lewis. In overtime, our final score, Ohio State 29, Purdue 22. Now, let's get you back to the studio.